Hello everyone, welcome to the discussions of the past year questions. This video we shall discuss paper 4, Mechanics, May June 2024, paper 41. Let's take a look at the first questions. The car starts from rest and accelerate at 2 meter per second for uh, 2 meter per second square for 10 seconds, then travel at a constant speed for 30 seconds. The car uniform decelerate, uniformly decelerate to rest over a period of 20 seconds. Sketch a velocity graph for the motions of the car. Okay, so for these questions, actually, if you read the question carefully, you have three stages over here. This is the first stage. Okay, then after that, this is the second stage. And this is the last stage over here. So the first stage, it takes... 10 seconds. So in uh, you just need to draw using a proper scale will do. So over here we have 10 seconds over here. Then after that continue with the 30 second. Extra 30 seconds, just 10 seconds plus 30 seconds you have 20, 30 and 40 over here. After that extra 2 more 20 seconds it will be 50 and 60. This is in terms of T T in terms of second, then this one is a V and meter per second. Okay, so for the first stage, you're initially you're at rest, accelerate for 10 seconds, then we need to find the V is equal to the U plus AT. So it will be zero plus the 2T. T is a 10, and then you get 20. So you will reach until 20 over here. First stage. Done. Then the second stage is you travel with a constant speed. Remain this constant speed for 30 seconds until here. Then after that you decelerate to rest. That means you're going to rest at this. So this is the answer for the question number 1A. Now moving on. Question number 1B, total distance traveled by the car. So the total distance traveled by the car means the total area under this graph. So in order to find the total area under this graph, just need to know the shape. Total distance traveled. This equals to the area under the curve. Uh, graph is a trapezium. So it's a half times the a plus the B multiplied by the C. Press the calculator and you get the answer as 900 meter. Done. This will be the answer for the question number one. Now we move on to question number two. Okay, now we take a look at question number two. True forces of magnitude 20 Newton and F Newton X at a point P in directions shows in the diagram, even that the resultant force has no component in the Y directions. Calculate the value of F. So that means that if you resolve it vertically, your FY is a zero. Okay, so if you resolve it vertically, then you will have 20 sine 60 is equal to the F, okay? or you can say minus F is equal to zero. Maybe we just say minus F equal to zero. So over here, your F is actually 20 sine 60. 20 sine 60 is a 20 uh, multiplied by a three over two. So it will be 10 three Newton. Done for the question number 2A. So move on. B, find, in, uh, given instead that the F is 10, find the magnitude and the directions of the resultant force. Okay. So now they, they say that this F uh, this has become 10 Newton. Replace it with 10 Newton. So what is the resultant force? Okay. So over here, we need to resolve the forces vertically and resolve the forces horizontally again. So if you resolve the forces vertically, you will have 
20 sine 60 minus the F, minus the 10. So you will get this one as the 10 set 3 minus 1. Uh, but I think the value will not be nice. We just direct press a calculator to do. So this one, I leave the answer in five significant figure. Okay. So this is the answer for the, uh, the, the part, part of the answer of the uh, vertical force over here. Now we want to go for horizontal force. So horizontal force will be only 20 cos 60. 20 cos 60 will be a 10. So to find the resultant force, to find the resultant force, you just need to use a formula, square root of uh, fx square plus the fy square. Okay. So just replace the value inside, press a calculator. You have a 10 square plus the 7.32051 square. Press a calculator and the answer is 12.4. We leave the answer in three significant figure we'll do. Then uh, to find the directions, the theta is actually the tangent of the Fy over the Fx. So it will be the tangent of 7.32051. 051 divided by 10, press the calculator, we get the answer 42.9 degree. Uh, so uh, we just say that the directions is equal to the 42.9 degree uh, from x axis. Just like that. that. That is the answer for the number 2B. Moving on, we have question number 3. Okay, now we take a look at question number 3. A train of mass 18, uh, 180,000 kilogram ascends a straight hill of length 1.5 kilometer incline at an angle 1.5 degree to the horizontal. As it ascends the hill, the total work done to overcome the resistance to motion is 12,000 kilojoule, and the speed of the train decreases from 45 meter per second to 40 meter per second. Find the work done by the engines of the train as it ascends the hill, giving your answer in kilojoule. So what we need to do here, uh, we can have a diagram. To describe what is actually happening here, you are having a angle of 1.5 degree incline to the horizontal. Then the distance distance of the hill is 1.5 kilometer. I make it become meter, so it will be 1,500 meter. Okay. Then the speed over here is 45 meter per second, and when you reach to the top of the hill, it's become only 40 meter per second. Okay, and in between you have the resistant motion. Your work done by the resistance is actually 12,000 kilojoule. This is the information given. So by using the conservations of energy, we are having the work done by the uh, driving force plus the Ke loss is equals to the uh, BE gain or the GPE gain plus the work done by the resistance. Okay, we can make it like this. Then uh, work done by the driving force. Maybe we can just write, uh, because they mentioned work done by the engine, uh, so maybe we can just write work done by the engine. Okay, so work done by the engine 
is equal to the MGH plus the 1200 kilojoule minus the half M of the U square minus the V square. Okay. So the M is 180,000. The G is 10. The H, this is the H. H is actually 1,500 sine of 1.5 degree. So this one, it will be 1,500 sine 1.5 degree plus the 12,000 kilo joule. Okay. Then uh, minus a half M. U square is 45, V square is 40. Then everything, just press a calculator and you can get the answer as 444-27760.43 Joe. But we want to make it become kilo Joe. That means this decimal need to move three steps in front then we will get this as the 444. Four, four. Uh, we want to make this become three significant figure. So leaving the answer like this will be easier for us. So this will be the answer for the question number three. Okay. Moving on, we have question number four. Now, number four, a car of mass 1,700 kg is pulling a trailer of mass 300 kg along a straight horizontal road. The car and trailer are connected by a line in extends for string which is parallel to the road. There are constant resistances of motion 400 Newton on the car and 150 Newton on the trailer. The power of the car's engine is one uh, 14,000 watt. Find the accelerations of the car and the tensions in the cable where the speed uh, is 20 meter per second. Okay, so we need to draw a diagram. I just draw a diagram. The car over here is actually heavier. Okay, so we have a, a 1,700 kg over here. That is the mass of the car. Then uh, we have a trailer. Which is uh, only 300 kg. Okay, so you're moving this way. Then over here you have a resistance for the car is 400 newton. Then the resistance for the trailer is 150 newton. Okay, then the power over here, 14,000 W. So we need to know the force, the driving force. We need to know the driving force. So in order to know the driving force, we need to use a formula B equal to FV. Okay, B equal to FV. So when the V is equal to the 20, okay, so the P is equal to the F V. This is the driving force. Therefore, your driving force is 700. And if you resolve the forces horizontally, uh, we will consider the car and the trailer okay, separately. So I will consider at the car, if I consider it horizontally, then I have the driving force. There's a tension here. There's a tension here. Minus the tension, minus the uh, resistance force, it will be equal to the MA. Okay, the mass for the car. So it will be 700 minus the tension that you do not know. This one is a 400, okay, minus a 1,708. So over here, uh, 
that 1,708. So over here you will get 300 minus a D equal to 1,708. That is your first equation. Then add the trailer. Also consider the forces horizontally. This time you have D minus the resistance force is equal to the M T. It's not FC, yeah. it's not FT. So you have D minus the 150 is equal to the 1708. That is your equation number two. Hey, sorry, MT is 300 only. That is your equation number two. Take the number one plus with the number two, you get this one as a 150 equal to the 2008. So your A is actually 0 0.075 meter per second square. Okay, so from the equation number two, your T is equal to the 150 plus 300 of A. Then you get the answer as 172.5. This one is in terms of D. Uh, this is a, uh, the Newton. Uh, tension. So it's Newton. Okay. So this will be the answer for the number uh, 4. Move on. Number 5. Okay, now take a look at number 5. A straight slope of length 60 meter inclined at an angle of 12 degrees to the horizontal. A bob, a bob sole starts at the top of the slope with a speed 5 meter per second. The bob sole slides directly down the slope. It is given that there is no resistance to the bob sole's motion. Find the speed when it reaches the bottom of the slope. So we can just draw a small diagram over here. This is a 112 degree and uh, the length over here is 60 meter. Okay, so you are dropping from here with a speed of 5 meter per second and this is smooth. You mentioned that the uh, no resistance, that means it's a smooth. So we want to find the speed, that means we want to find the V. How much is it? Okay, so what you can do is that we just need to use the formulas of the V square equal to the U square plus 2AS, 2A, 2A H, okay, hey, no, not H, 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 S, 2AS. So the U is 5. You are moving down, your acceleration is a G side theta, so it's a G side theta. S is 60. Just press the calculator. Then you will get the answer as 16.6 meter per second. Okay, just like that. that. This is the answer for the 5a. Now we're moving on 5b. It is given instead that the coefficient of frictions between the buff sole and the slope is 0 0.03. Find the time it takes for the bob sole to reach the bottom of the slope. Now they say that they have frictions. So if you have frictions, we will need to consider the normal contact force. This is your R. This is the Mg. Maybe I just draw halfway of the motion. Just draw halfway of the motion. This is the R, this is the Mg, this is the data, uh, data yeah, this is the data. Right? Maybe we write here data. This is the data. This is your frictional force. Okay, so if you consider the forces this way, you have R equal to the Mg cos data. 
and I do not know the M. Okay, then we can just write this one as the uh, FR is equal to the mu R. It will be equal to 0 0.03 of uh, mg cos 12 degree. Theta is 12 degree F. So we can just leave it like this. Then if you resolve it this way, you have the mg side theta minus the FR is equal to the MA. So mg sine theta, it will be mg sine 12 degree minus the FR, just direct put it in, is equal to the MA. You can see all the M can be cancelled. So the A is equal to the G of sine 12 degree minus the 0 0.03 multiply cos 12 degree. Press the calculator. We can just direct, leave the answer as decimal. I will have 1.7857 meter per second squared. However, this is not the answer that we're looking for. We need this value in order to get the final answer. The final answer is to find the time when you reach over here. So over here, since it's involving time, if you apply the Sovat equations, we will use the formula S equal to the UD plus half AD squared. The U is the initial speed. The initial speed is 5. The total distance from top to the bottom is 60. The A you have just found. So over here, if you uh, just use your calculator, but before that, I need to simplify first, make it become a quadratic equation. So I have 0 0.89284 plus 5D minus a 60 equal to 0. Then you get the D is equal to the 5.86 and the D is equal to negative 11.5. So because of the time it will not be negative, so we ignore this. Therefore, this is the answer for the question number or oh, 5B. Okay, just like that, done. Now we move on. We have question number six. Okay, question number six. A particle move in a straight line starting from a point O. The velocity of the particle at, at time t second after leaving O is v meter per second. Given that v uh, is k uh, is equal to k t power half minus 2t minus 8, where k is a positive constant, and then the maximum velocity is 4.5 meter per second. Show that the k is equal to 10. So since they mentioned maximum velocity, I just need to take the v to differentiate to get a dv dt. dv dt will be the half k t power negative half minus of 2. Okay, so in order to get the maximum velocity, your dv dt must equal to 0. That means uh, your half k t power negative half is equal to 2. That means your uh, you will get that the k is equal to the over square root t, okay, 4 over square root t, okay, but I think, uh, okay, wait first, uh, we need to find out the, we need to show k is a 10, but to, in order to find k, we need to find the t, so how to find the t, so we just say that uh, when, so that means uh, I'm not supposed to leave the answer like this, uh, I'm not supposed to leave the answer like this, uh, because I need to make this become t is equal to the 4 
uh, over k square. No, we do it one by one, uh, safer. Uh, okay. So t power negative half is equal to the 4 over k. So the t is actually k over 4 square k squared over 16. Uh, that will be better. Now, when the d is equal to the k squared over 16, you will get a maximum velocity. Your v is equal to the 4.5. 4.5, I prefer to write it as a fraction, 9 over 2. Then, we just substitute this value of d and v inside these equations over here. So it will be 9 over 2 equal to the k d power half. Okay, minus a 2d, minus a 8. So you will have this one as a k square over 4, minus a k square over 8, minus the 8, 9 over 2. Then you will get this one as the 25 over 2, k square over 8. So from here, you can get the k square equals to 100 and k equal to 10 because of the k is positive like this shown. Okay, so this is the answer for the number 6a. Moving on, 6b part 1, verify that when v equal to 0, uh, when d equal to 1 and d equal to 16, the v equal to 0. So first of all, we just need to replace the k that we have just found in the part a inside the equation v. So you're supposed to get something like this. So when the d equal to 1, my v is equal to 10 minus a 2 minus a 8 equal to 0. When the d equal to 16, my v is equal to 10 of 16 power half minus the 32 minus a 8. So you get this one as the 40 minus a 40 equal to 0. Verify. Okay, so this one very fine already. Then after that, we want to find the distance traveled by the first 60 seconds. Okay, 16 seconds. So you can see that over here, this information, they say that from 1 until 6, from 1 until 6, the V is a 0. So we do not need to have the graph, but it will be easier if you have a graph over here to explain. So you can see that the information given in part B, B part 1, is that 1 and 16, your graph will be a 0. And just now they say that 4.5, you will get, uh, not 4.5, uh, uh, what is the maximum? The maximum happened at here. The maximum happened at the t equals to the uh, k square over 16. Okay? So k squared over 16, since k is a 100, uh, 100 over 16. So 100 over 16, you get this as the 25 over 4. Okay, 25 over 4. So 25 over 4 is uh, somewhere here. Right? 25 over 4. You will get a maximum 4.5. So your graph will be passing through, passing through here and here. But uh, we need to start from zero. We need to start from zero, the first 60 seconds. Okay, so, okay, over here, when the t equal to zero at the very beginning, your v is actually 10, uh, zero power half minus the two of zero minus the eight is a negative eight. It's over here, negative eight. So you can see that this graph has uh, negative graph and a positive graph. And uh, if you want to find the distance, they are looking for distance, they are not looking for displacement. So we need to find the integrations. So that the integration will be the area under the graph. Okay. So the distance travel. It will be S equals to integrate from 0 until 1. Uh, the formula, the V is a 
tan d power half minus a 2d minus a 8dd. Okay, so over here, we just put modulus to protect the value become positive plus 1 until 16. The tan d power half minus a 2d minus a 8dd. So this will be the total distance travel. So over here, just integrate as usual. Remember to put the modulus. This, this one will be uh, 20 over 3 d power 3 over 2 minus a d square minus a 8d. We put the value 0 to 1. Then this one is 20 over 3 d power 3 over 2 minus a d square minus a 8d from 1 until 16. So just substitute the value inside. Over here, you will get this as the 20 over 3 minus a 1 minus a 8. Put modulus. Minus a 0. Plus the, this one will be bit troublesome. Okay, so we have a uh, this part 20 over 3 16 power 3 over 2 minus a 16 square minus a 8 times 16 minus the if you put one inside you will get 20 over 3 minus 1 minus 8 okay just like that so i need to squeeze in everything inside not in our place Okay, so now you press the calculator, at the end, you will get the answer as 142 over 3 unit. Using unit, they're using meter. Let's check. They say meter, huh? so we just put meter, meter per second. So it's a meter, distance is meter. Okay, so this will be the answer for the question number 6. C. Uh, not 6C, sorry, 6B part 2. Okay, so now we move on. Question number 7. Okay, now we take a look at question number 7. A particle of mass 0 0.2 kg projected vertically upward from horizontal ground with a speed 25 meter per second show that the speed of B when it reaches 20 meter above the ground is 15 meter per second. So a B is projected going up with the U equal to 25. Okay, then we want to find the V over here. We want to show that this is a 15. Okay, and this height is a 20 meter. We need to show this. So just use the super equations. One of it is a V squared equal to the U squared plus 2AH. Since it's vertical motion, I change the S become H. So it will be uh, 25 squared minus a 2G of the H. So your V is equal to the square root of 225, the 15 meter per second shown. Okay, just like that for the part A, done. Now, after this, uh, when B reaches the 20 meter above the ground, it collides with the second particle Q of the mass 0 0.1 kg, which is moving downward at 20 meter per second. It is brought to instantaneous rest in the collision. Find the velocity of Q immediately after the collision. So over here, we need to draw a diagram. So I have a particle B. That particle Q. Okay. So Q is going down, P is going up. So uh, the mass of the P is 0 0.2. The mass of the Q is 0 0.1. The speed before collision is 20 meter per second. Then the speed of the B B 
before the collision. Just now we have found that in the part A, it's a 15 meter per second. So what you need to do is using the cons uh, conservations of linear momentum, principle of conservations of linear momentum, we have the MP, UP. I treat this as uh, I treat this as uh, positive. Okay, uh, let me just highlight over here that I treat the velocity that is going up as positive. That means the velocity that is going up must be going down must be negative. So this one is a uh, MQ. UQ. So it's a negative 20 because I treat the going downward as negative is equals to the MP VP. This one is a zero plus the MQ VQ. Uh, okay, so this is the speed of the Q after the collision. And then you just use your calculator uh, and then you press it. You find that the UQ is equal to the positive 10. Okay, so this one positive 10 means you're going upward. That means the directions after the collision, after the collision, Q goes up with 10 meters per second, but the P becomes zero. So what happened next is after this, then the Q will go like this. Then the P will direct go down. Ah, okay, so this is what happened to the P and Q after the collision. Moving on. C, when P reaches the ground, it rebounds back directly upward with half of the speed that it had immediately before hitting the ground. Okay, so at P, you are going down right now. Okay, at P, you are going down right now. So when you're going down, just now we found that the speed is a zero. Then you're going down. Okay, so you're going down, it will be like this. The particle P will be like this. Going down. So over here, I make this become UP equal to zero. Then I want to find the speed before you hit the ground. I want this one is a UP equal to zero. I want to find the VP. So using this formula again, VP square equal to the UP square plus the 2AH. So it will be the VP square is a zero square minus the 2G uh, plus the 2G because you're going down. The height is a 20 meter. So your VP, it will be uh, 20 meter per second. So that means when you hit, the, right before you hit the ground is 20 meter per second. Then after that, B rebound. Okay, B rebound. So the B rebound, after you rebound, then you rebound with the speed of W. Okay. So the WP, is dimension is half of the speed, half of the VP. It will be 10 meters per second only. Okay. Now, while P is falling down, Q is continue with the motion going up, but Q, after Q going up, up to a certain extent, it will go down. So we need to know the time, what happened at the meanwhile, while the P is falling down, we want to know what happened to the Q. So over here, we need to find the time taken for the P to reach to the ground. Okay, we need to find the time taken for the P to reach the ground. So for the VP equal to the UP plus the AT, we have a zero plus the 10 T. This is the 20 meter per second. So your T is actually two seconds. Okay, so it takes two seconds for P to reach to the ground. So 
at the same time at Q. What happened to the Q? Q is going like this. Q is going like this. Okay. This is what happened to the Q. So for the Q, I having the UQ. Just now we found that the UQ is moving up with 10 meter per second, right? Okay, so we are using this formula. VQ equals to the UQ plus AT. So it will be 10 minus a 10T. Uh, 10 minus a 10T. So VQ is a negative 10. So the negative 10, that means uh, two seconds later you are having negative 10. That means it's a, this one, the negative means you're going downward. So remember that when you going upward is 10 and when you going downward is also 10 by the conservation of energy, that means two seconds later, Q come back to the same place where P and Q collide at the very first time. Okay, uh, so over here, that means uh, uh, two seconds later, Q back to the same place again with the VQ as 10 but it's going downward. So this is by the conservation of energy, nah? by the conservation of energy, two seconds later, Q back to the same place. So now, what happened now? Two seconds later, Q is moving downward with the 10 meter per second. And P is moving upward after the rebound, the speed, after rebound, the speed of P is 10 meter per second. It's also 10 meter per second. So this time they want to going up and this one want to go down and then they want to collide for the second time. Second collision. Okay, so the HQ and the HP add together must be 10. Okay, must be 10. Add together must be equals to then uh, 20 meter, uh, 20 meter, yes, 20 meter, must be 20 meter, nah? and together must be 20 meter, okay, so now over here, HQ, HQ is going down, okay, you are going down, it will be 10 meter per second, plus the half GT square, okay, then the HQ is also 10, but you're going up, it's minus a half GT square, Okay, then uh, HP plus HQ is equal to the 20. So just add together. Oh, I forgot to put the T. I make a mistake. There's a T missing here. There's a T missing here. So over here you have the 20T is equal to 20. Add together. Uh, these two add together. So you have a T is equal to one. Okay. So one second later, what is the height from the ground? Okay, one sec when the T is equal to one, then your height of the T from the ground is oh, this is a P. My apologies, huh? Okay. So add together, you will get this one as a ten minus a five one square. You get a five meter. So when they have a second collision, the P is actually 5 meter above the ground for me. Okay, so that's all. So this is the answer for the uh, question C. That's all. Okay, so that is the last question, last part of everything here. So I'll stop the video. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.